Idaho Falls Pediatrics, where you supporting kids in our community in 7 Questions with Emmy. Hey guys, welcome back to 7 Questions with Emmy. Today I'm talking with John Beasley. He's the real life Top Gun. He's a test pilot for fighter jets. He's flown the fastest planes in the world, served in the Air Force. He and his wife, Susie, have six kids and live in Rexburg. Thanks so much for talking with me today, John. It's fun, thank you. Question number one. Can you tell me about the fastest plane you've ever flown in and how fast you went? Probably the fastest plane I've ever flown that you would know is the F-22 Raptor. And I've flown that one to twice the speed of sound. The way we would talk, we would say that's Mach 2. Question number two. When did you decide you wanted to be a pilot? I probably decided I wanted to be a pilot when I was about uh, 14. I'd always felt uh, that that was something I liked to do. I used to play with airplanes here in this flat town all the time, and uh, probably about 14 it became very clear that that's what I wanted to do was to go fly airplanes. Have you ever had a major emergency while flying, and what did you do? <laughs> I've had several. Back when I was flying the Stealth Fighter Black, when it was a top secret program, there was three times I thought I was going to have to eject. And it turns out I didn't have to, and I got to bring the airplane back all three times. But one of those times a, a tail came off, another time an engine blew up, and another time the air data computers went kind of crazy and the airplane acted very strange for a little bit. And then another time, first time I flew the YF-22, uh, I had a starter catch on fire and I had to shut down one of the engines and land the very first time I flew the airplane. And I think there's a few others. Number four, what do you like best about flying? I've always enjoyed it. I think it just seems very natural to me. Uh, it seems like what you should do. I think if I hadn't become a test pilot, I don't think I would have flown as long as I did. What I found that was very exciting to me was the combination of technical things and flying. And so what I used to always tell people was that it's, if it was just the Formula One race car part of being a test pilot or being a fighter pilot, I probably would have quit earlier. But doing everything and working with the engineers to help them design the airplane so things were right, uh, then I used to tell people that when the dream came true, I had the best seat in the house. Question number five. Can you tell me about your craziest adventure? My craziest adventures? One of the most interesting adventures I had was I was demonstrating an F-16 to the Hungarian Air Force in 1996. And 1996, we were in a place, I spent Halloween 1996 in Transylvania. It was just about 50 miles away from where we were flying. And they brought in a guy and we were demonstrating the airplane. We put him in the back and let them fly the airplane and then get out. The guy that came in was a very famous man in the uh, Hungarian Air Force, the Major General. He came in, he put on a little air show, landed, came in. He did not speak English. He spoke Hungarian and Russian. That's all. And so as we were briefing through an interpreter, I says, if I want the airplane, I will say, John, fly. You got that? He says, yeah, got that. John, fly. Great. What would you like me to call you, sir? And then he said, Attila. See, I flew with Attila the Hun. <laughs> His name was truly Otila, Attila Kosicki. Marvelous pilot. So for four years I sat alert in Europe, facing off against the Cold War, against the Warsaw Pact. And uh, he was on the other side. And then as my wife likes to say 20 years later, here we are playing with each other's toys. So that may have been one of the craziest. How do you keep cool in really stressful situations? There's a very short prayer, this gun at the first, and it's this long. Please help me. <laughs> <laughs> and then when you're in a single seat fighter, which is mostly what I flew, and things go very bad, what you want to do is you want to say, this is very stressful, why don't you take it? And there's nobody there. So you just have to do it. And so that's when you have to focus. What I found helped me was to know things, to be very knowledgeable about how the airplane flew, why it flew the way it did, 
and then go through it and just walk through it one step at a time and always be ready for unexpected. In each of those occurrences, I was very fortunate to be able to go through it and, and do those things. Uh, it comes with training, it comes with preparation, it comes with a little bit of reliance on some help. And um, it doesn't mean you're not nervous, but it doesn't do you any good to get nervous. And there's nobody else to do it, so you have to do it. So there's a reality there that's kind of scary. But uh, one time I did that, and I came back, one of the last instances in the F-117, and I was nice and cool and calm and collected, and everything was fine. And then I looked down on my feet, and my foot was bouncing like this. Question number seven, is Top Gun like the real thing? You know, I think um, a lot of people who've flown airplanes come up with a lot of different really strong things to say about Top Gun. What I think about the movie is that they did an exceptional job. There are things in there that are details that they didn't have to put in that only a really good observer would see. One of the challenges they have with the movie is this. They're trying to convey something that nobody in the audience or most people in the audience have never experienced nor ever will experience. So, for instance, when the guys turn very hard and pull G's and things like that, somehow they have to make you feel like the weight of the world's falling on your shoulders. And so they have to do that through visual effects. They have to do that through other things. And some of it they did in this movie, this last movie, they went out and pulled G's and took pictures of themselves. And you don't look pretty when you're getting a whole bunch of pulled G's. So I think in general, I think they did a very good job. There's some artistic license there on all of the movies. Some of the people say, well, those guys aren't really like that, and they're not. But they're kind, of, they're kind of blown up a little bit, if you will. And so what happens is, did I recognize guys that I've met that were like some of those guys? Yeah, you bet. Did, were some of the things very accurate? I think they did a very good job. Here's an, exact, an example of an accuracy that most people wouldn't notice. When Tom Cruise in this last movie is launching off the aircraft carrier, if you watch his hands, he puts his hands up on the arm rail. Well, why would he do that? You wouldn't do that if you're going to be thrown off the airplane. One of the things that happens is you go from zero to 150 miles an hour in about the distance of three or 400 feet. It's the acceleration. So the last thing you want to do is be holding on to the stick as you do that. So they don't. The airplane's programmed to fly off straight. Set the trims are set up so that it will do that. Now, see, that's a detail that most people wouldn't notice, but it's one that they took the time to do. Are there holes in the story? Yeah, there are, but it's a movie and it's meant to entertain. I think it does a very good job of capturing what's there. You'll see a lot of people come up with very precise criticisms. I think for what they're trying to do, they did an exceptional job. Okay, now I have a few bonus questions. Good, bonus questions. <laughs> Oh, what have you learned being a fighter pilot? I think being a fighter pilot, the things I have learned are things like um, having confidence, being able to handle stress. One of the things you do is you have stressful situations like we talked about, but they give you lots of check rides. I've taken so many check rides, it's incredible. And sometimes you get a guy who gives you a check ride and he just sits there like he's a dead log and he won't say or do anything. And so he, it's like he tries to make you nervous. So one of the things I learned when I was in pilot training after they did that to me for two or three months was to get just a little bit mad and say, I'm going to show you what I can do. So there's a determination there. The other thing I learned was you can't stop learning. I learned that very much as a test pilot. You can't ever stop learning. Have you ever blacked out in the cockpit? I have never blacked out in the cockpit. Uh, one of the things that was most realistic about the movie Top Gun, the last one, was there's a scene in there where a guy is pulling hard and he blacks out. And it seems like it takes him forever to come back. The reality of that is that uh, after you black out, there's about 30 seconds, up to 30 seconds before you get useful consciousness back. So it's very dangerous. So you do a lot of things to avoid blacking out. And uh, a lot of it has to do with stressing muscles and things like that. Have you ever been scared for your life? Scared for my life? I think I've been scared. Probably the worst was when the tail came off. It did a thing called flutter, which means it kind of disintegrated. I can show you a movie if you want. But um, for three seconds, which doesn't sound like very long, but it was an eternity for me, 
the airplane was uh, vibrating and the vibration was enough that it was like uh, riding a motorcycle down between the rails on the railroad tracks at about 60 miles an hour. It was on the, it was, that one was really close, so. What advice do you have for me? For you? Mm -hmm. I think it's important for people to learn how to play well with others. I've watched a lot of people who, who are very talented, who don't do nearly what they could because they don't play well with others. That doesn't mean that you have to do what they say. It doesn't mean that you can't be right. It does mean you have to listen. It does mean you have to te treat people with respect. I would say whatever you choose to go into, be determined to learn as much as you can about it. Each of those instances that I talked about, my knowledge from not while flying, but from meetings and study and talking with the engineers, is what saved my life. Okay, so okay. we saw a couple of cool things when we were walking in. Can we come and can we go look at that? You betcha. Here we go, you ready? Yep. This is just a few of the things. The one here is a picture of my mom and dad, but these are plaques. That's a plaque when they put me in a Hall of Fame one place. See this picture here? That's me. Is that a pretty picture? Yeah. This is the F-117. There's a story behind that one painted like that. I was the first guy to fly that. This is a plaque that was given to me from the F-35. These are a lot of different things. This was when I was flying the F-22. Uh, this plaque over here was when I find the YF-22. This one here is, these are the guys who designed the flight control system on the F-22. And you can tell that they made me this plaque with all of these things on it to commemorate the time we worked together. I worked on that for 14 years. This is the picture of the airplane that uh, Attila the Hun was flying. You see this name here? Mm -hmm. Attila Kosicki. I've flown just over 50 different kinds of airplanes. And about 6,000 hours, most of it in single seat airplanes. That's cool. But that's what they look like. I told you about when the tail came off. Mm -hmm. That's the medal, and that right there is the Chief of Staff of the Air Force giving it to me. This is a plaque that was given to me when I left the Air Force. That's the biggest piece of the tail. And then when I said the engine blew up, the engine blew up. That's the part that caused the bomb. When I did the F-117 and you left, normally they would give you a model of the airplane, but it was a top secret program, so you couldn't give a model. So this was the model they gave you. So, sticks. This is what the one from the F-22 looks like. That's okay, but this cool. is a facsimile. This isn't a real one. This is the one from the F-35. Wow, that's really cool. Now see, the interesting thing about it is that each one of these buttons goes in and out, up, down, left, right. Five functions. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Just roll that on like that. We'll push those up. Mm. You ready? You'll yeah. be able to breathe through this. I did wipe it out from the last time somebody used it. Okay. I think you probably need a picture with that. <laughs> so, Amy, talk. Can you talk? Hello. There you go. Pretty hard. Can you breathe okay? Yeah. And that's what you'd wear every time. Every time. Well, you actually, I wore this one right till I got pretty much out of the Air Force in the early days. We wore different helmets. The helmet we wore on the F-35 had all the display up front and it was like a $400,000 helmet. Thank you, this is so cool. <laughs> well, I'm glad you got to do it. Thank you so much for talking with me today. You bet, glad to do it. It's Bye. exciting. Bye. Thanks so much for watching. Remember, new set of questions and interviews are posted every Thursday. Be sure to follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Love you guys. Bye. Idaho Falls Pediatrics. Why are you supporting kids in our community and seven questions with Emmy?